Hello pilots and welcome back to Flying with Overkill F-18C. It's good to be back in the seat. Sorry for the little hiatus. Life got a little crazy. So today we're going to be taking a look at the AGM-88C HARM or High Speed Anti-Radiation Missile. Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in the seat. Now, before we actually start getting into it, if you are not familiar with the RWREW page, please click on the card that should be displaying on the screen right now as you're going to want to be familiar with those before trying to effectively use the harm. Um, following today's tutorial, you'll be able to fire the harm, but you may not know what you're firing at, okay? And that's obviously critical with any weapon that we use in DCS. So, for everyone else, let's go ahead and get started. First, what is the harm? As I said, high-speed anti-radiation missile, but what the heck does that mean? Anti-radiation, in layman's terms, is anti-radar, okay? So what it does is it finds radar emitters that are down on the ground, uses their radar signal to as a path down to the target, and destroys them, hopefully, if all goes well, okay? Now, it's important to remember that if a target is on the ground and has a radar but is not using it, the harm can't see it, nor can our RWR, which the harm can use either our RWR or it can use its own seeker to track a target. We'll go over the differences between the two here in just a minute. So that is how it works in a, in a hand basket. Radar signatures on the ground are going to be things like your EW, your early warning radars, your search radars, targeting radars, and um, anti-aircraft artillery with radar guidance, such as like a Shoka. Okay. So those are the only things that it can hit. It can only hit targets that are down on the ground. It can't hit air-to-air -air targets, so don't try it. All right, now let's go ahead and get set up. So we're going to go to air ground mode. We're going to switch our right DDI to the EW page, and this is in no particular order. You know, do this at your, at your preference. We're going to go ahead and box the harm. Now you can see we're currently in SP. This is self-protect mode. The other mode currently available to us in DCS is target of opportunity mode. This is at the time of making this video. Hopefully this changes soon. Um, and the final one is pre-briefed, which I'll tell you guys about, but unfortunately we can't use it. Now, you can see the harm is currently uncrossed, shows a ready status, and Station 8 is currently selected. This is important to realize. We don't have any air-to-ground, or excuse me, ground-to-air, surface-to-air radar emitters currently active. And yet, if I were to push the weapons release button right now, the missile would fire. Okay, self-protect mode um, takes the highest priority radar signature and tries to attack it. In this situation, you can actually see what it's looking at by this box right here. This AE, this is a Navy identifier, okay? This is the, uh, actually I believe it's my Stennis carrier group that's out there. Okay, this square box, which I can change by hitting the field of view button, okay, so if I hit I on my keyboard, I can move that box around. This is what the harm is going to try to attack if I were to fire it. Now, a cool thing, if I hit reset, you can see that the box moved back to this original location. What this is, is this is what is currently being deemed as the highest priority emitter. Now, how does the harm, or RWR I should say, determine what is highest priority? This is where things get a little bit um, more complicated, so try to follow me here. Priority is determined by radar signal strength, okay? not necessarily by what is using the radar. It's signal strength. How strong is the radar that it's using? An early warning radar, okay, just a large radar dish sitting on the ground. All it does is spin around and look for anything in the air. Uh, an example of, I, of an early warning radar or something similar to it would be like a radar at a, an airport, okay? Air traffic control uses a similar radar system. It doesn't focus on any one particular target. It paints the entire sky, you know, floods it with radar uh, radiation to um, identify where the different airplanes that are coming to the airport are. That's an example, an example um, of what how similarly a, an early warning radar works. Then you have your search radars. Search radars are looking are initially working in the same manner, so we're just flooding the area with low intensity radar beams that's hitting the aircraft just to identify, okay, what's out there. But a search radar on certain missile systems can also go, okay, wait a minute, this guy right here, this is an F-18 coming inbound, this is hostile. I'm going to increase the energy source because I want to get a better look at this guy. We do something similar when we're in air-to-air -air modes and we lock up a target. So in the first mode, we have range wall search. Okay, we have our radar on. We can see every airplane that's currently in the radar's field of view. Okay, but when we pick a target and we lock it up and go in single target track, 
all the other targets, sorry for bumping the mic there, all the other targets disappear and we only see that one. And that's because the radar has now focused all of its energy or most of its energy on this one aircraft. Okay, and that's the same thing that happens on the ground. Damn it, did it again. Sorry, guys. Um, so again, at that point, when the radar has increased its energy and is now focusing on us, its priority has also increased. And then you have things like an SA-3 system or SA-6 system where it can switch over to the targeting radar. When the targeting radar locks us up, it's going to be an even higher intensity radar signal, which is going to give it an even higher priority. Okay, so priority is determined by radar um, energy. And we use that signal to determine what is the most threatening target. A, a very, very high intensity radar signature, well, that's only used to track a target very, very finely. Okay, so we interpret that as pilots as something's about to shoot at me or something has already shot at me. Okay, the same thing happens when, for example, a missile goes pit bull like an AMRAAM. Okay, when first when we first fire it, it's using the aircraft's radar to guide it. And then when it goes pit bull and its own radar takes over, it's an even higher intensity radar signature and the RWR knows that and goes, oh crap, hey, that's a missile, it's coming at you. Okay, so that's how priority is determined. How strong is the radar signature? Um, I know I sort of repeated myself a few times there, but I want to make sure you guys understand that before getting into this. Okay, so the reset will automatically switch the harm's priority to the highest threat. Okay, the highest priority. Okay, so now um, let's go ahead and talk about um, target of opportunity mode. Okay, target of opportunity mode, now we get a little bit more control. We can determine by using our field of view button, we'll be able to bounce it around um, inside any emitter that's inside the seeker's field of view. Okay, and any emitter that's inside the seeker's field of view will be able to select, like I said, using the in India key on our keyboard, the I key, our field of view button. Um, and then we use our cage uncage button to actually hand that track off to the selected missile and then we can fire on it. So it's very target of opportunity. That's the difference between the two. Now, in target of opportunity mode, you can see these four T's. These indicate the seeker head's field of view. Now, the seeker on the harm does not have um, ground stabilization. So it's not like the Maverick. It, as the targets move across the battlefield, the seeker on the harm will not move with it. It's strictly where that camera or that seeker is pointed. That's all we see here. Okay, it will not move as the aircraft moves. It's important to remember that. Okay, limit. The harm seeker head can currently display up to 15 independent um, radar emitters on its uh, screen here. Limit will only show the highest five or highest or top five priority targets. Okay, so again, talking about that priority. So only the highest five. Um, then you have the current missile runtime. Scan and class, as far as I can tell, uh, do the same thing. What it does is filters out what. Um, emitter will currently display on the screen. Now what I believe is supposed to happen is scan, okay, these are all the different classes of emitters, the different types of emitters. Think of them as family of emitters and we'll go over to what each one is in just a second. What scan is supposed to do is if I select, for example, um, this is a hostile anti-aircraft artillery, so that'd be like a Shoka. When a Shoka, if I select this and Shoka pops up on the screen, it should get a circle around it indicating, hey, this is the um, filter you wanted me to look for specifically but you can see it also changes up here in class so I don't think it works as designed in the aircraft at the moment for DCS world uh, correct me if I'm wrong I just I haven't been able to see that in action as of this time okay now if we go into class let's go over what all of these are real quick you can also find this information in Chuck's uh, DCS F18 tutorial guide and I'll try to remember to put a link for that in the description below but it can be found on the ED forums <clears throat> So, quick spin, we have all, friendly, hostile, friendly navy, hostile navy, friendly old, hot, or friendly modern, hostile old, hostile modern, uh, friendly anti-aircraft artillery, hostile anti-aircraft artillery, friendly search, hostile search, unknown, and priority. The only one I want to talk about real quick is priority. Again, the only thing that's going to display on the harm seeker if priority is selected is a uh, very high intensity radar signal signal okay so basically something that's locking you from the ground all right so for today's tutorial we're going to go ahead and select hostile we only want hostile emitters to display in the field of view for the harm all right 
And the final mode, or actually real quick, you have your reset, which we already talked about what reset does. It will switch the currently selected target back to the highest priority step, obviously steps through the station. And then the final mode, as I was about to discuss, is pre-briefed. It is not currently available at the time of making this video in DCS, to my knowledge. But what pre-brief does is allows you basically to designate a waypoint. In our case, we would designate as waypoint one, and we could fire the missile at maximum range. And um, once the missile got within range to detect targets, it would determine what the highest priority is and strike it. Okay, now, speaking of range for a second, Red Kite did some phenomenal testing that he was kind enough to share with the rest of the community. This can also be found in Chuck's tutorial guide and Red Kite's YouTube page. If you haven't checked it out, please uh, go into YouTube, search Red Kite DCS. He pops right up. Give him a like and subscribe on his videos. He does a phenomenal job with his tutorials, and his harm was absolutely on par. So, in his testing, he broke down, he fired the missile at different ranges, altitudes, and speeds and uh, was able to strike targets at the following. I'm going to give you three different numbers. The first one is range, then altitude, then airspeed. Okay, so you have 70, so in 70 nautical miles, 40,000 feet at 380 knots indicated airspeed. 50, 30, and 400. 35, 20, and 400. 25, 10,000 at 400 and 15 at 1,000 at 550 knots indicated. Okay, those were all successful strikes that he was able to um, uh, complete at those ranges, speeds, and altitudes. So again, thank you very much, Red Kite, for making that information available to all of us. That is really awesome. Make sure you guys check out his YouTube channel. All right, so we've talked about range. We've talked about the different modes. We've talked about the different things available to us. We've talked about how priority is determined. Now let's go ahead and put this missile into action. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and bring up some targets. <clears throat> And you can see our RWR and Harm Seeker Head have now come to life. We're going to start out in self-protect mode. So you can see once again the ready is set. We're going to hit our offset button. We're going to cycle it as new contacts have come up. And you guys can now see what we have up here. So coming up here for a second, you can see we have, looks like, one, two, three, four ground search radars indicated by the house that goes above them. Okay, and then we have an early warning radar. Now this early warning radar won't be uh, targetable. Targetable? Lockable? anyway <laughs> by the harm missile and we need to make sure we move our box now let's go ahead and hit the reset button and see what happens so currently our friendly ship over here is still the highest priority so it's got the highest intensity so let's go ahead and move in a little bit okay so now i'm gonna go pause for a second we can see an SA-6 has popped up. Why it's popping up way over there? I mean, that's like back there. I have no idea. That's completely inaccurate. But, oh, we actually have the offset set, so that could be tripping it up, too. So if I were to unpause, cycle that offset, and I'm going to hit the reset, notice the square moved. Now, I had to hit the reset. I had to wait for the priority to change. Right now, they're all in this outer band. This is where that previous tutorial I was telling you guys about is really important to watch before you guys try to use the harm. The SA-6 search radar has now moved to the more critical threat of the bands okay so it's become a higher priority its radar signature as i was talking about earlier its radar beam intensity is higher than everything else around us so that's where it's getting its priority by hitting the reset button the um, harm or the rwr automatically changed the highest priority to the sa6 so now if i unpause and weapons release for magnum this is the brevity for firing a um, harm it will go after that SA-6 radar. So we're gonna go ahead and just sort of pull us off course here a little bit, make sure that it doesn't shoot at us. And let's go ahead and watch our missile. All right, so there's our missile coming right at the target. Now I could have fired at the search radars a long time ago, and I'll show you guys how to do that in just a second, but I wanted you guys to see how to use it in a more critical situation first. Go ahead and speed up time. And that is an SA-6 sight. Pausing for a second, you can see the SA-6 only has the one radar. So that search radar is used as both the uh, a search system and the targeting system. So this is what I was telling you guys about earlier, where it increased its radar uh, signature on us 
Okay, basically it turned up the juice um, when it was getting ready to shoot, and that's why it's a priority increase on the RWR page. Okay, the other thing, the missile did not actually hit the target. Um, it will not always destroy the target, and, and its purpose is not necessarily to destroy it, but to damage it enough where the radar emitter no longer works. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. So that is another one of the gambles and drawbacks to using the harm. So let's go ahead and unpause. Let's go back to our aircraft. All right, so now let me show you how to do it if we want to specifically shoot at it. So I'm going to reset that priority again. Okay, and it went back to the Navy ship because right now the naval ships have a higher radar intensity. And by the way, the harm is a very heavy missile. So when you shoot that thing, you're going to notice it in your controls. <clears throat> okay, so now the search radar has once again been deemed a higher priority. I just watch the box shift over. Now, turning back on target, I'm going to cycle my offset again. And if I want to select a different weapon or a different target, I'm going to use my field of view button. And you can see I'm moving that box around. So let's just fire on that one. Magnum again. Let's get the heck out of here. Not trying to get too close today. And we'll see what this one does. So this one should be going after a completely different target if I selected the right one. And it looks like it already is. Going to a completely different zone. All right, and that was a direct impact. Okay, and that one looks like a, that was a search radar for an SA-3 site is what that one was. All right, so those are the two modes to use the harm in self-protect mode. I just hit the microphone again. I am so sorry, I'm still getting used to the fact that things there. Um, I'm not using a headset anymore. I got a desk mounted mic, decided I want to be a big kid. So that's what's going on. All right, so now let's go into target of opportunity mode. Now, the first thing I need to do is make it my sensor of interest. So I'm going to hit sensor select left to select the left DDI. You can see the diamond up there in the top right. The other thing I wanted to show you guys is I was telling you earlier, I think, about this arrow. This arrow indicates that the harm knows there are radar, radar emitters over this direction, but it cannot currently see them. So keep an eye for this arrow because it will tell you um, that you have targets that are available, it just can't see them, okay? And you may have a situation where you have emitters on the screen and an arrow. So the arrow is just simply saying that, hey, I know there's some emitters over here and to the right, and the arrow will obviously appear on any direction. So let's bring it over. All right, so now I've got an emitter. And what I'm gonna do here is, actually I'm gonna keep banking is I'm going to use my RAID field of view button again to select a different one. All right. Then I'm going to hit my cage uncage button. And you can see handoff. Okay, that's what that H off means, handoff. So the signal has now, or the track has now been handed over to the harm on station eight. And you can see the cross is gone. The missile says ready. So if I unpause and press my weapons release, Magnum, missiles away. get the heck out of here again <clears throat> let's do this last track here speed it up and looks like another search radar for an SA3 site survey says yep that's exactly what that is. All right. And so that was a search radar for the SA-3. Now I'm going to show you another drawback. And there's our arrow showing us to the left now, by the way. So here's the drawbacks. Again, we talked about the fact that if a uh, radar emitter turns its radar off, the missile can go dumb and the missile can get shot down. I'm going to show you guys the missile getting shot down this time. So we're going to go to F-10 here. Let's bring up the SA-15, this little bugger. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and select a different emitter this time. So cage on cage. I'm gonna go ahead and, or excuse me, that was field of view button. And I'm gonna hit my cage on cage to hand it off. I'm gonna fire the missile. So there's Magnum again, that's our last one. Throw us back into an altitude hold. 
And let's see if anything fun happens. Diving down with the rocket still going. So, what's going to happen here is that the Tor is going to pick the missile up and start shooting at it. One of two things is going to happen. Either the Tor will be too late, um, and either terrain avoidance or the missile was just fast enough and reached the target first, or the Tor is going to shoot this thing down. Or with my luck, just because I wanted to show you, I'm going to pick an emitter that was actually safe from the tour, but we'll see. There it is. So you can see the missile coming up. But in this situation, we won. But you guys can see over there that the um, tour was firing at it. So we got lucky. Our missile hit the target, so kind of a cool situation that you guys got to see there. I was fully expecting the missile to get shot down. Um, it's very last minute that the tour engages it. It's very short range, so that is one of the perks. So if you plan your attacks accordingly, uh, you can get in there. Um, but uh, the missile was able to strike the target, so we scored on that. But uh, you guys got to see the best of both worlds, best and the worst. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, big thing, remember your priorities. Remember to hit your resets. Um, if you don't pay attention in self-protect mode to what the RWR is currently deeming as your um, priority, um, you can find yourself uh, firing at something you didn't want to fire on and wasting a missile. Um, it's very important to remember that if you had one item designated over here on the RWR and a different uh, emitter locks you up okay and you're in self protect mode again be sure to hit that reset button before you fire it okay it will not automatically switch okay um, but uh, yeah that's pretty much uh, the harm in a hand basket so if you guys have any questions or comments anything that I didn't clarify anything I might have missed I hope I caught everything but uh, make sure to leave you any questions or comments in the fields below. Hit that like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notification of future videos that will be coming out very shortly. I've got two of them already lined up. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. And please, please, please stay healthy, everybody. I know it's crazy out there. Uh, keep flying, and we'll see you soon.